We're going to go ahead with the lesson. Uh, we've been talking about a short work the Lord would do in Israel and the prophecy about a, a work he would work among them and they would not believe. Um, if that sounds strange to you, it, it may be because they don't fit with your own understanding of it. Um, people, you know, well-meaning people, uh, Sunday school teachers, pastors, parents, teach us the best that they know, the best that they've been told, but that doesn't guarantee it's the truth. Studying the Bible guarantees it's the truth. So, uh, many of us find that uh, we've been exploiting the Bible as a tool to justify our own understanding rather than um, rather than that we should just believe the words on the page without adding our own assumptions to them we need when we're studying the word of God we need to consciously set the word of God as as our authority we need to make that be the deciding factor not what we're used to not what the way we've always done it uh, not as we were saying before um, you know as well-meaning people may have told us the best they know but it's not in line you know you hear over and over people uh, hearing things about the gospel or about the Bible and then things just don't sit right. It doesn't seem to fit with what the Bible actually says. And then they find the truth. They keep searching. Well, let's believe that God still knows more than we know. And then let's seek God's wisdom, his wisdom and his knowledge. And uh, that's been recorded for us faithfully through the century, through the millenniums actually um, in the word of God in the Bible God made covenants with Israel to make Israel acceptable to God look at Leviticus 26 verse 12 and I will walk among you and will be your God and you shall be my people now, Leviticus that's that's while they were still in the desert. Uh, God gave the law, the uh, Levitical law. During Israel's rise, part of the Abrahamic covenant made Gentiles who bless Israel acceptable to God too. That was, uh, he blessed Israel and he blessed those that blessed Israel. Genesis 12, 3. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee, and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. Those Israel blessings, the, the, well, the Gentiles that blessed Israel uh, with, with Israel blessings, the Gentiles benefited from that part of the covenant of, of promise, the plural, I guess. There, there were several covenants there. there. The uh, the benefit was for Israel, but it spilled over if the, to the Gentiles that would bless Israel. But Israel is no longer rising, but rather Israel has fallen and been blinded and cast away until the fullness of the Gentiles become into what the one spirit is baptizing gospel of Christ believers into. And... Uh, Today, that's the same body that we're, we're baptized into. Um, someone was questioning, and, and uh, since we've come upon it, uh, the blinding, the fall of Israel, and the blinding and the casting away are not the same thing. Uh, the fall was when, as a nation, they were no longer... Uh, the way to get to God, no, no longer the way God was working in the world. They were, they had fallen from their exalted position down to, to the way we are. They have to come to God the way we do now. But their casting away 
was uh, no more. Um, Paul would you remember in Acts? Uh, what is it? Acts uh, twenty-eight. I think it's verse twenty-four. He called together the Jews, not not any other nationality. I mean, he gave them special preference right then. He called them together. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure if it's 24 or 20, but it's in Acts 28 before the uh, Isaiah 6 casting away curse. But that's what the blinding is, that Isaiah chapter 6, verses 9 and 10. The casting away in Romans 11, verse 2, Paul says Israel is not cast away. Well, he had written that in in Acts 20, verse Three, and so by Acts 20 verse 3 they had not yet been cast away but when you read in uh, the 15th verse Romans 11 15 he talks about their casting away as a, as a, uh, a sure thing that it's going to happen and then when, when we see that that's the end of the Acts of the Apostles there's nothing else to report uh, in Acts 28 we know that that was their casting away and we can see, look, look in uh, Romans 11:11. 11, 11. There's some things to see there. That's a packed verse, uh, in a good sense, <laughs> not like the courts. Anyway, um, <clears throat> I say then, have they stumbled? Have they stumbled? Talking about Israel, did they stumble that they should fall? Well, they did stumble, but not so that they would go on and fall. They caught themselves after the crucifixion when they stumbled. Uh, Paul goes on God forbid but rather through their fall is uh, through their fall salvation is come unto the Gentiles so by the time he wrote this in Romans in excuse me Acts chapter 20 uh, salvation had come to the Gentiles that he's talking about in that verse unto the Gentiles. Paul did not say unto all the Gentiles, did he? He could have. He does other places, but that in in Second Timothy, after he had been sent to all all the Gentiles. But here he says unto the Gent salvation is come unto the Gentiles for to provoke them, Israel, to jealousy. So the Gentiles it came to were the ones that would provoke Israel to jealousy. No one can be made acceptable to God today by blessing Israel. Okay? That's history. That's, uh, that was available. It's no longer. God's not working that way anymore. Uh, and we know that from, from how Israel fell. Matthew 12, 31 and 32, especially 32 as far as I'm concerned. No one can be made acceptable to God by blessing Israel. Israel's gospel of the kingdom, uh, their gospel of the circumcision, it's no longer in effect. It no longer works. After Israel fell, God saved, sealed, and separated Saul of Tarsus unto the gospel of God, that the offering up of the Gentiles might be acceptable, being sanctified, set apart, by the Holy Ghost, and that's uh, we find that in Romans 15:16. I must repeat that it does not say that people are saved by the gospel of God. Uh, it says that there <laughs> the offering up of the Gentiles, Gentiles uh, might be acceptable. No longer does anyone need to bless Israel in order to be acceptable to God, acceptable to hear and believe the gospel of salvation, salvation's gospel. Um, any Gentiles that offer up his trust in Christ to have died for that Gentile's sins is saved. They're saved. They're coming to God by faith. Uh, they're responding to the gospel that Paul preached. 
Although Paul never preached Israel's gospel of their kingdom, he did preach the gospel of God to make them wise unto salvation, the salvation of the gospel of Christ, which was God's power to save the Jew first and Jew blessing Gentiles, Jews and Jew blessers. <laughs> Uh, that emphasizes that the, the Jews and the Gentiles were in God's program before Paul was saved. His program then was Israel. Uh, the covenants made to Israel. After Israel fell, God provided salvation the way that Paul was saved, a different pattern. Um, that's where we get our room name, follow Christ's pattern. Believing the gospel of God made a person acceptable to hear and believe the gospel of Christ to be saved. The gospel of God, remember, is not... Well, what is it? It's... <laughs> and I heard two, two ways uh, in the earlier lesson. One, that you can't define it. And then he went to uh, Romans 1, 1 through 4 that does define it. But it's believing that Jesus is the Son of God. By the resurrection from the dead, it's proven. So that's two things. He was resurrected, he's the Son of God, and he's the Messiah, the descendant of David that would rule the world. So nothing in there about saving you or conditions to be saved, how to be saved, what to believe to be saved. Nothing in there in the gospel of God. It's in the gospel of Christ, later called the gospel of the grace of God, when it was sent to all of us. The gospel of Christ is to believe that Christ died for my sins, he was buried, and he rose again. And that is a very uh, restful, uh, peaceful, <laughs> what's the word I'm looking for, um, calming thing to realize that the sins that you've been worrying about your whole life are all already paid for, not just taken away somewhere or hidden or, you know, out of God's sight. He actually became sin, my sin, and died my death on the cross. I'm crucified with Christ. <coughs> uh, when we <laughs> When we see... In uh, the gospel, in other places too, in, in a briefer form, we can, uh, let's look now at 1 Corinthians 1 verse 2. Unto the church of God, which is at Corinth, to them that are sanctified, and remember in Romans fifteen sixteen, the gospel of God sanctifies the, the Gentiles, uh, sets them apart. Sanctified doesn't mean... Well, it does mean that they're set apart, okay? <laughs> comes from the same root as saint, set apart one. Set apart, usually it means for God's purposes. Unto the church of God, which is at Corinth, to them which are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints, with all that in every place call upon the name of, the, of Jesus Christ our Lord, both theirs and ours. Well, they needed to call on the name of Jesus. That's what the uh, gospel of God is about, isn't it? It's about identifying who the, who Jesus is. Who He's the Son of God, the Messiah, resurrected. And that represents his name. When you, when you talk about Jesus, that's Savior, Christ, that's Messiah, anointed one, and Lord, that's God. Um, you're you're practically, you know, it's an encapsulated. Uh, what's what's the term I'm looking for? Condensed uh, form of the gospel of God, which identifies Jesus Christ as our Lord, um, both ours and theirs. Um, Paul says that those believers to whom he is writing who had separated from the apostate synagogue in Acts 18 verse 7 we don't have to go there but uh, 
those that want to can check it there. Acts 18, verse 7 is where they separated out of the apostate Jewish synagogue. And they had believed the gospel of God. You can see that in, in the verses just before that. Acts 18, verses 4 and 5. And their, thereby, by the gospel of God and their faith or their belief in the facts of the gospel of God, uh, they were sanctified or set apart and acceptable to hear and believe the gospel of Christ to be saved. How to be saved? 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4. Well, then Paul conveyed God's calling to them to be saints, sanctified ones. And we'll look for that in uh, 1 Corinthians 1, 9. God is faithful by whom you were called unto the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And uh, in, in 1 Corinthians 1, verse 2 that we read earlier, the word for saints has the same, wor- uh, same root as the word for sanctified. So Paul was calling them to be believers in the gospel of God, which would make them acceptable and sanctified to hear and believe the gospel of Christ. It does, the gospel of God does not save them. It makes them ready. Just like Paul said to uh, Timothy that the Old Testament scriptures make him wise unto salvation. It doesn't save him. It makes him wise so that when he hears the gospel, he can believe it. He's ready to believe it. Well, Paul tells an alternate way of expressing the gospel of God. He calls the gospel of God believers all that in every place call upon the name of the of Jesus Christ our Lord. And the name of anyone identifies him. It represents the facts about who he is. And in Romans 1, verse 2, actually part of the gospel of God definition in verses 1 through 4, but in verse 2 it says that God promised the coming of Jesus Christ by announcing several identifiable facts about who the coming Christ would be. He was to be recognized. The Lord had made it uh, available. Just like there's a lot available in the Bible today. People think they know it all and talk about, you know, and and (laughs) they're talking errors, but they don't want to look and see. They've got the truth in the Bible, but... Okay, it's hard to see that, uh, to see people doing that. And and I sure... uh, want to make sure I'm not. Anyway, uh, the biblical facts are named, facts about Jesus. Uh, let's look at Romans 1, 1 through 4. Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God. And I don't know if you remember an earlier study we did. He separ- There's one separation there. He was separated from his mother religion of Judaism unto the gospel of God. He was separated to the gospel of God from that religion he had been in that, that we're all aware of. Uh, so going on to verse 2. God, talking about the gospel of God which he had promised a fort afore by his prophets in the Holy Scriptures. Verse 3, uh, concerning his son, Jesus Christ our Lord, which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh. Romans 1, 4, and declared to be the Son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. So you've got concerning his son, talking about Jesus being God's son, and it calls him Christ, that's Messiah in Greek, our Lord, uh, made of the seed of David, that would be the Messiah, Messiahship of Jesus, 
and declared to be the Son of God. Again, it says he's the Son of God declared by the resurrection from the dead. So the resurrection is part of the gospel of God too. And not only does the gospel of God make people acceptable to hear and believe the salva saving gospel, the salvation gospel uh, in the gospel of Christ, but the gospel of God is what Paul was separated to from the womb of his mother religion, Judaism. And you can find that in uh, Galatians chapter 4. Not only was Paul separated under the gospel of God, but you can see the record of him carrying out that calling, uh, being separated to the gospel of God. And you can see it in Acts 4 verses in particular. Uh, Acts 9, verse 20, verse 22, verse 27, and verse 29. And for verification, we want to read those now. Straightway, he preached Christ in the synagogues that he is the Son of God. So emphasizing his sonship there, that who he is, facts about who he is. Verse 22, but, cri uh, but, excuse me, but Saul increased the more in strength, and confounded the Jews which dwelt at Damascus, proving that this is very Christ. There he's proving the Messiahship of Jesus. Verse 27, But Barnabas took him and brought him to the apostles and declared unto, him, unto them how he, Paul, had seen the Lord in the way and that he had spoken to him. So did Jesus see the Lord? Uh, he had seen the Lord in the way. Yes, he did see the Lord. Um, and, had, and, and had spoken to him and how he had preached boldly at Damascus in the name of Jesus. So preaching that Jesus is the Son of God and that he is the Messiah, the Christ, is what what was called here in the Bible in verse 27, pre uh, preaching boldly in Damascus in the name of Jesus. So that gospel of God is related closely to the name of Jesus. When you see believe on the name of Jesus, it's talking about believe those three facts from the gospel of God. Acts 9.29, the fourth of those four verses, uh, and he spoke boldly in the name of the Lord Jesus and disputed against the Grecians, but they went about to slay him. Both those in the body of Christ and those in Israel's church of God needed to believe the gospel of God. They needed to know who Jesus was. The apostate synagogue, all of them, you know, the, uh, all of them that were apostate were apostate because they rejected the gospel of God. That's the pivot point there, the turning point. Uh, they rejected the gospel of God, that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, risen from the dead. When the Jews or Greeks heard Paul preach the gospel of God in the synagogues, if they believed that gospel, they were no longer welcome in the synagogue. According to John 9, 22, and we'll look at these verses, John 12, 42, and John 16, verse 2. Starting with 9, 22 in John, these words spake his parents because they feared the Jews, for the Jews had agreed already that if any man did confess that he meaning Jesus, was Christ, he should be put out of the synagogue. And then John twelve forty two. Nevertheless, among the chief rulers also, many believed on him. But because of the Pharisees, they did not confess him, lest they should be put out of the synagogues. Synagogue. So there's further proof they would be, you know, that there was, uh, uh, the apostate synagogues didn't allow that belief of the gospel of God in their synagogues. And it's here it says, uh, because of the Pharisees, they did not confess him, confess his name, who he is, that, he, that they believe he's the son of God 
the Messiah, risen from the dead. John 16, 2, they, uh, they shall put you out of the synagogues. Yea, the time cometh that whosoever killeth you will think that he doeth God a service. After Paul preached the gospel of God to them about who, about who Jesus is, who he, who he was sent as and who he really was, is, present tense, <laughs> and after they got ushered out of the synagogues, Paul had a group of two kinds of believers in it, as we'll see in a few minutes. Both kinds of believers needed to know how to be saved into the body of Christ. So Paul preached the gospel of Christ to that two-part group, showing how God had started saving people by a new pattern. He would preach to them that this new gospel of salvation was the power of God by which he saves people who believe the gospel, the gospel of Christ. And we saw that uh, in the previous study, too, in Romans 1, 16. Early in 1 Corinthians, Paul briefly showed how to be saved in the verses, uh, first chapter, verses 17 to 24. But later, by the time you get to 1 Corinthians 12, 27, Paul says, now you are the body of Christ. So Paul initially preached the gospel of God to them. And after that point, Paul no longer calls them to be sanctified saints or set apart to hear and believe the gospel. By then, they had already believed the gospel of God and had become sanctified ones, saints, set apart to hear and believe the gospel of Christ. Then he reminds them briefly uh, of the gospel of salvation that he had preached to them when he was there. And then uh, that would be in uh, the gospel in uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. And then after they had the opportunity to hear and believe that Christ died for their sins, Paul tells the believers in 1 Corinthians 12, 27, what we saw before, now you are the body of Christ. And then a little later in, in chapter 15, Paul goes in to uh, give a more details, a, a more detailed declaration, so, so to speak, of the gospel of Christ, the gospel of salvation, how to be saved, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 to 4. Or you can include the appearances because there's no period at the end of 4. The appearances uh, would be 1 to 6. Then a little later, um, well, earlier, er, early, it would be earlier, um, we see a brief telling of the gospel where in 1 Corinthians 1.18, for the preaching of the cross, it says, the death or the blood, talking about that aspect of, of, of the gospel, the death of Christ, his bleeding, uh, the, <laughs> the blood of the cross, it says in Colossians 1.20. Um, for the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. But unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. Do you see the connection there? The saved are saved by God's power to save people. That is the preaching of the cross. In other words, the preaching of what Christ accomplished on his cross, on the cross. And speaking of the power of God, that is what Paul calls his gospel, this gospel that he believed and that he is preaching, the gospel of Christ. He refers to it in one six, Romans 1.16, For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it, the gospel of Christ, is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. In other words, that's how God has enabled himself. Well, he was able. <laughs> he does things legally uh, by his own. He doesn't break his word. Uh, he doesn't uh, indulge other. You know, it's got to be by the books, by the law, uh, that he, the way he, 
the law in the sense of his way of operating, the way he does things. Um, I didn't finish the verse, did I? For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. Not just to everyone, but to everyone that believeth. To the Jew first, and also to the Greek. Now, why isn't it to the Jew first and to the Greek anymore? Well, it is. The gospel of Christ is. Where uh, that gospel, that saving message, underwent a change in name because it was sent to us too, to all people. And that's all that changed. It's still the same 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. So Romans 3, verses uh, 21 and 22 tell us that this salvation includes the glorious righteousness of God that is imputed to us. Uh, It's unto all, he said, but it's only upon all them that believe. Belief again there. Faith is is what counts. Romans 3, 22, even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all them that believe. For there is no difference for all have sinned. Corinth displays two different groups of churches and you can see them in the text and if you know what to look for and we're going to go through that before we close here. Um, On the topic of Paul's churches being a group or a pattern of churches separate from Peter's churches, we can glean some facts from Paul's inspired comments to those at Corinth. I believe the scriptures clearly show that the group in Corinth to which Paul wrote had previously been adherents, adherents, uh, keepers, uh, to the apostate Judaism. They were apostate before Paul came and preached the gospel of God to them. But by Paul preaching the gospel of God, many of them had now become believers that Jesus was the risen Messiah, the son of the living God. And that was the only thing keeping keeping, um, God from sending the tribulation and the kingdom down. They, They rejected the prophets, the Messiah, and the Holy Ghost in in Stephen's speech. Some of those had gone further, those in that group had gone further, Paul's meeting I'm talking about, some had gone further to believe Paul's gospel of Christ, crucified for their sins, and in so doing they became part of the new body of saved believers called the body of Christ part of the pattern that God started with Paul's uh, Acts 9 salvation. Now, we want to uh, stretch our, (laughs) our, uh, we're not going through mental gymnastics, but we need to think about this. If I say to you, go close the door, well, you understand what I mean, but Part of it is not spoken or written. The subject is missing from that comment. Uh, Or rather, the subject is understood. You understand me to be saying, uh, (laughs) you go close the door. The meaning of the sentence. Uh, You understand that the subject is you. Uh, You go close the door. Subject and verb. Well, what about the comment, got to get up and start moving around? That actually means I've got to get up and start moving around. But the I've, I've got to, I've is uh, understood. You know that it's there. Uh, It's meant, but it's, you've shortened it. Go close the door means you go close the door. The you is understood. Well, let's look in 1 Corinthians 10.32. In the same way, um, we'll find out what it means there. Uh, The verse says, Give none offense, neither to the Jews, nor to the Gentiles, nor to the church of God. Well, that 
verse is telling them something, but who is the them to whom Paul is speaking? Um, the, the the statement, the verse, verse 32, means you give them none offense, neither to the Jews. You give none offense, neither to, to the Jews, nor to the Gentiles, nor to the church of God. So we can see here the four groups in the First Corinthians 10, verse 32, uh, comments there that Paul was making. What is the first group? First, uh, well, let's count the groups first. Count the groups. Uh, starting at the end of the verse, we've got there's the uh, the church of God. And then look up the next line up. It's uh, the Gentiles. And then up from that would be the Jews. And we still have at least one more group in the verse, but it's not named, is it? The other group is understood. It, it was the you to whom Paul was speaking. Uh, so who was the you group to whom Paul was speaking? Well, they were not one of the other three groups. They were an, an additional group, a different group from what was named. Uh, or else Paul would not have named the, uh, the other three groups separately. In 1 Corinthians 10.32, you, understood, you is a different group from the three groups that Paul names in the verse. So there are, were four groups in that verse. <coughs> Not only the Jews, Gentiles, and Church of God, but also the you group, understood to be there, the body of Christ, believers in the gospel of Christ. The ones that had heard the gospel of God, come out of the synagogue, went to Paul's meetings and finally got to hear the gospel of Christ, got saved, uh, were saved. <laughs> um, they had come out together, uh, together with those who started to believe like the scattered little flock, Church of God believers, that was the other group in that, that meeting. Uh, both those two groups believed the gospel of God, so they couldn't stay in the synagogue they believe that Jesus is the Son of God, the risen Messiah. The difference between those two groups, which had been separated out from the apostate synagogue, was that only the body of Christ also believed the gospel of Christ, crucified for their sins. So the <laughs> there is the difference, and we'll get into more tomorrow. We better take a break here. Or 